We're live. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful sunny day. I can't believe I know. Having that sun. Um, this is your Blue Line group with your Blue Line Wives roll call. I am Amy Lewis with Priority Mortgage. I am Jamie Wright with Wright Dalbo Insurance. And we are coming to you live from LAPD Firearms and Range at Bethel Road. Um, right here in Columbus, Ohio. So I will let you <laughs> tell us about what we <laughs> like to do. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> For those of you that don't know who we are yet, we are a dedicated team of law enforcement families um, specializing in real estate, financial, and insurance services, fervent about ongoing professional relationships, and giving back to our first responder families. Good morning, Amy. Well, I love the Water log? Yes, yes. It was a flood everywhere I went. Roads are closed. It's just been miserable. But anyway, I'm back from vacation, and it's. I came back to that. Sorry, tried to bring the sun to you. I made it all the way to the border of West Virginia and Ohio, and unfortunately, <laughs> the sun did not want to follow past that border. So well, we're here now. Yeah. And it's 90 degrees. Yeah, but we've got a really great show for you today. Um, we had such an overwhelming response to our previous podcast about self-care and things that um, you can do, whether you're a first responder or the wife of, and uh, just to take care of yourself. Yeah. So we're going to take that in a little different turn, but still kind of talk about the same thing, hoping that maybe some of you out there would be... Um, benefit in some way, and I'm sure you can all relate to something. You know, and I think we had such an overwhelming response because <laughs> we struggle with this. You know, we just struggle, or we just struggle, we struggle with even defining what self care is for us. Um, and so I think that it just, it was so relatable to a lot of people, especially too in this lifestyle. It's like you're doing all the things for all the people, and that's not necessarily related to life. So mm -hmm. that's, that's moms and, and parenting in general. Um, that's but, even stay at home moms. Let oh, me tell you, that's, that is the hardest job. It really is. You I, don't ever get a break. Yeah. I could never do that. It's so much easier <laughs> for me to go to work. I don't know. I, it's, I don't think I could do either. I don't think I do either. Well, let me just put it that way. You don't do, I don't, I, I couldn't well, be or? a stay at home. Well, and I know that I'm also not a, a, a working mom and, and wife and all. I know I don't do that well either, but we just live day to day. Right. See, but that's the thing. That's the thing. You're not giving yourself enough credit. No. no. Who does? Well, exactly. And that's, I mean, <coughs> constantly having to remind myself or having somebody remind me that I'm not giving myself enough credit because you're an awesome mom and you run your business really well. You actually, you actually take care of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try my best, but, it, but you know, the common thing with mothers is that they always put themselves last. Sure. I don't care if it's, um, you know, taking care of yourself physically, putting yourself last, but you also put yourself last at the dinner table. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the last. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I often eat cold meals. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. As a matter of fact, we sat down the other night and I had my meat and I was like, oh, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, well. Um, but everybody else was taken care of, and it was fine. Um, and then we put ourselves last, I think, financially. Mm -hmm. Well, probably not me. I'm a little bit different in that realm. Well, but wouldn't you buy your kids what they need before you buy yourself something? Yeah. Like, for example, um, I had an Amazon gift card yesterday. And it's like, it's like you know, burning a hole in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> of course it's Amazon. And... Um, <laughs> So I, I, you guys are going to laugh at me. i um, give you a little tidbit about me insider. You know, those little hands, those little mini hands that like, I think her name is Darla from Saturday Night Live did the little dance. No. Oh, yes. Kristen Wiig played yeah. it. I know exactly who you're talking about. Okay, she so had those little I, tiny. <laughs> I really wanted a pair of those. Okay. Well, first I have to ask why, <laughs> because that's know. kind of, it's kind of odd. I think that they're <laughs> hilarious and they'll be good for, I'm going to bring them on podcast one day. It's okay. It's going to be so funny. I'll wear my mask yes. and you can have my your little, little hands. baby hands, your doll hands. But anyway, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, so this is the kind of stuff I buy. Um, and then I, but I was like, my daughter needs a set of pajamas and then I got her those little rubber bands to make little pig, piggy tails. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I could have gotten a, anything else. I mean, I actually like won that gift card. It wasn't like I'd purchased it. Like I, it, but you still spent probably half of it on someone that was not you. Right. Right. Point being. Now I will <laughs> say though, my husband is very generous. He doesn't really tell me no very often. So I will buy, 
I spend a lot of money on essential oils. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's self care. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um. So I do. I do spend some money on myself. You know, I my husband never tells me no either. That's that's a really great quality to have if you're looking for a mate. Um. He never tells me no either. However, I tell myself no right. because you know if you think about what I do for a living, I deal with money, money. And finances. I look at people's credit every day and I see what they do. And I just think, well, that person's great. That person needs help. Um, whatever. I don't want to be one of those people that someone looks at my credit and says, what are you doing? So I cut myself off. Yeah. That's, uh, that's like, um, that's just a part of the job. Well, I realize how important it is. You're right. And one little, like a lot of people don't understand how their credit works, but one little purchase could make or break whether or not you qualify for a house. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it, it's it's amazing. I only know that because that's what I do for a living, and that's why my mind works that way. So I go without so everybody else can feel like they have no wants or needs. Yeah. No, yeah, I think that's a part of being a wife and a mom too. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just is. I mean, how many kids, how many times do you walk into school or church or wherever you're going and you see the mom carrying their kids or whatever, and the kids are all dressed in these beautiful dresses and matching outfits, and here's mom in stretch pants and like an old you, t-shirt with holes in it. You do you, girl. <laughs> I hear, I feel you, I yeah, see you. You know that that's the mom who never gets a break, that she is sacrificing, and she's giving to her kids before herself. Yeah. Well, she's a good mom. Yeah. yeah. I don't look at her and think... Oh, she could have like dressed herself up. I look at her and I think that is a busy woman yeah. who has no time for herself and she could use a break. Well, That's what I think of when I see that. You know, I actually read this little like tidbit thing. It was on Facebook. Um, but it was, it was about, you know, this mom and her daughter go to the pool and they have matching outfits and she <laughs> lays out this like picnic and it's really pretty and it's like gingham pink print and yeah. you, you know, this, not the other and puts her daughter in the pool and she's on her phone, you know, she's posting yeah. to social media or she's talking on the phone to somebody or, and her daughter's like, mom, play with me, play with me. Um, it's all about perception. Yeah. That's how and people And it looks really pretty on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. But yeah. she, I mean, she, there was no interaction yeah. with her daughter. So she packed them up and left. And then, the, you know, there's the other mom who is a, is a hot mess. Hot mess. just And yeah. she's playing in the pool with the kids. She's got mascara running down yeah. her face. I mean, that's what those kids are going to remember. So. That's it. Do we, do, do we talk one time about, um, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't here. But anyway, I had a conversation one time with another mom about um, traditions the whole thing about traditions and I sat and I thought we don't have traditions I'm like, so I'm texting my husband I'm like what do we have I mean we do we do anything that our kids are ever going to remember because that's the important part about being a parent right and he's like well I don't know we do pizza Friday and I looked at my daughter I was like do you like pizza Friday oh it's the best yeah. day ever I'm like that's yeah. what it is traditions don't have to be <laughs> big elaborate yeah. expensive yeah you know but point it, being spending time with your family is more important than what your perception yeah. is that you're putting out there amen so um let's get get to talking about how we can make that a reality and not a perception sure as far as self-care so um you know i was thinking there's there's a lot of different ways you ever just sit down and think oh my gosh let me tell you about my day um, Every day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, can you believe the day that I have? I, I, no joke. I walked. <laughs> I texted Jamie on my way here. I was like, I'm going to be here on time, but long story. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just kind of how our day goes a lot. But, you know, if you stop and think about it, you ever get up in the morning and you're, you're running behind and you get out and you're like, oh, I got to go, I got to go. And you get in the car and you get in traffic and you realize you don't have any gas yep. or your tire's low. Or you're getting ready to go on vacation, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll get the passports out. Here, they're expired. And now you've got to wait in line at the post office. You know, you've got to wait for all that. And you realize, okay, why? You get to a breaking point. Like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And I think the biggest, um, the biggest neglect, first of all, is self-care. Mm -hmm. But if you stop and realize that just getting sleep can help bring your whole world together. You're going to remember that, oh, I need to get gas. I remembered it yesterday and I forgot to get it. You know, taking care of yourself, actually, even though you're taking care of yourself physically, it affects everything around you. It affects your mental state, mm -hmm. your physical state. Mm -hmm. It affects your health um, and just your outlook on things. If you can just do one thing to help yourself and get enough sleep, 
I think you would find that you're not going to have those all those little things that kind of stair step and and drag you down. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Because I I was crazy after the birth of my second child and didn't get any sleep. I mean, my my cortisol levels were through the roof, and I was I had anxiety really bad. I mean, sleep was the answer. But sometimes when you have a baby, yeah, that's not know. it's not really gonna happen. So so here's a tip. Um, <laughs> If you're if you're having a bad day, just have a bad day. Don't fight it. You can allow yourself to have bad days. You know just there is nothing day. wrong with saying I need five minutes, and you go and yeah. do whatever you need to do, whether it's a cry, whether it's a <laughs> but I mean if, read or whatever. I, yes, but I mean I'm saying like if you need more than five minutes, if you need like twelve hours to have a bad day, just just let it be bad. Don't fight it. That way you're not angry with everybody else around you. You could just say, I'm having a bad day. Like I admit that I'm having a bad day. Yeah. You can have a bad day, but you don't want your kids to feel it. Right. And so those, those moms at home, that's where they're going to struggle. Absolutely. Because if you have one thing, one thing in the morning, that's bad. Yeah. (laughs) And then you just throw off your whole attitude about it. Um, you know, just be like, you know what? I'm just having a bad day. That way I don't, I don't. Yeah. Not everybody around me isn't having a bad day too. Attitude is 90% of it, right? Right. Right. You, right. I mean, you, you touched on that. One thing goes wrong and you get a bad attitude. Ni- attitude is 90% of it, I think. Yeah. So just let it go, man. Just let it go. Yeah. You've <laughs> got to find what day. works for you though, but you have something fun. Yeah. 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 So uh, I was talking, um, sometimes we just don't know what self-care means for us, what it looks like. Um, we don't know the style of self-care that we have. So this is like a little, a little something, something about how we can identify okay. with the self-care style. Okay. Um, so I need you to write down and oh. they're ABC answers. Okay. So just write down A, B, C, like whatever your answer right. is. And I mean, you can share it with us, but okay. So Amy, you are in a coffee shop. Kay. You A... Pick your spot in the corner so you have a good vantage point. Get comfortable and pull out your journal or sketchbook. You doodle, write a short story. Um, draw your best rending of the, the stuffed armchair across the room. That's A. Okay. B, invite a few friends to meet you and caffeine up. <laughs> okay. Uh, bring apples to apples and pictures from your last vacation and share. Friends busy, you strike up a conversation with people around you. C, pass on the coffee and order a creamy hot chocolate paired with a flaky croissant. After you claim your comfy armchair, you curl up and you tuck your knees under your big sweatshirt and daydream. A, B, or C? Oh, my goodness. I, You know, I'm really torn between two of those. I don't know if there's a, a reason behind that, but I suppose all of it depends on the mood. Right. But I'm thinking that if I'm doing self-care, what would I want? And I think I would pick A. Yeah. I so think y- I would pick y- A. Y'all write down your answers, too, and I'll tell you what the an- uh, the, cr- the um, self-care, what was it? The way that you, what's best for you and what works for you and what best describes. Okay. So, number two. Okay. You just arrived at the beach. You, A, plop your stuff down on the sand and head down (laughs) to the water so you can stroll to find beautiful shells and stones and decorate your sand castle. (laughs) Um, B, pack a cooler full of food and drinks as well as a big bag of things to play with (laughs) your friends. Frisbee, (laughs) buckets, shovels, um, you have so much fun telling stories and laughing that you'll probably do dinner too. Or C, lay your towel out, <laughs> dab a little extra organic sunscreen on your nose, <laughs> squeeze lemon juice in your hair, and get ready to nap in the sun. Oh, if my husband is watching or listening, he's laughing because first he's going to say the answer is not there. Um, second of all, he's going to know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> so Okay. <laughs> when you exercise, you A... Don't need to be in the gym to feel like you've worked out. Why not climb a mountain, go ride a bike, or take a a dance class instead? Uh, B, love a good Zumba class as much as the next gal. The more group focused, the better. You're up to walk with a friend pretty much any time and catch up with your lives outside of the gym. Or C, hire a personal trainer and join a fancy gym. Spending your time in wellness is important enough that you're willing to spend money on it too. Okay. I got my answer. Okay. Uh, Next question. You're at your day job. You, A, scoff at work-life balance. If a career isn't all engrossing, what's the point? You paint, sing, act, and uh, when you need to, you teach others to do the same. Art is a lifestyle, not a job, and creating something brings the meaning to life. B, you are the water cooler queen. 
And you love to organize bake sales and charity fundraisers. <laughs> you never miss a Friday happy hour with colleagues, <laughs> a.k.a. friends. <laughs> and when coworkers need a shoulder to lean on, you're the first stop. Oh. See? Uh, you are happily on board with a new wave of entrepreneurs. We're having a VA, a personal assistant, and an intern are expected. Traveling while working is non-negotiable, too. When you're not on the road, you're shopping for office supplies. Oh, this is a really hard one for I me. I know. I was between all three of those. Yeah. But I'm a little bit of all of that. I just had this conversation yesterday about the work-life balance. balance. Uh, that one is a really tough one. I need to come back to that. Well, pick one, woman. Scoff at work life balance, the water cooler queen, or you're happily on board with the new wave of entrepreneurs. Oh. I picked this one. I know. I was kind of <laughs> leaning towards that <laughs> one. <laughs> you decided to visit a museum. You, A, choose a hands-on museum, even or especially the ones built for kids. Um, you, you like to touch things <laughs> it says animals make we don't talk about that on flush. air <laughs> <laughs> look their telescopes and so much more uh, b choose to attend an event put on by a museum hearing an author or researcher speak about all they know in the flesh is better than reading or c love learning and soaking in all the history and information available when visiting an exhibit you take your time looking at each item and lingering before moving on okay i'm good on that one it's date night you a <laughs> what's want that <laughs> want to be involved from the get-go you're more likely to propose a date to someone uh, who's up for anything skydiving comes to mind oh and the art gallery down the street is calling your name that's a <clears throat> excuse me b Dream of the perfect couple to double date with and won't stop testing these waters until they can be found. Until then, attending a party or joining a group class or workshop with your partner offers up more fun than going to dinner alone. Or C, expect the best. Whether you're going solo or being treated by a friend or partner, in the case of the latter, you hope surprises of the luxurious kind are in store. Okay, I'm kind of in the middle of one of those, but I picked one. Okay. Um, you're staying in to watch a movie. You, A, love picking up a great film and cooking dinner that matches the theme. Last time you watched Moonstruck and served <laughs> warm baked bread on a brick oven with Italian wedding soup. Yeah, not happening at my house. <laughs> B, uh, sandwich the movie between dinner with friends before heading to the theater and dessert at the 24-hour diner. Or C, <laughs> watch that movie you've been you've seen maybe 14 times you love the characters and you love the best dialogue which is the perfect ending plus you can miss of the scenes while painting your nails or switching to a new pocketbook okay i got that one uh mm, breakfast time you <laughs> a try new things even in the kitchen even in the mornings when there's a thousand other things that you could be doing avocado three ways sure why not because <laughs> uh, we all have time at 5 30 in the morning to think of new recipes well, so it won't be A. <laughs> B, looking forward um, to your standing Friday breakfast with your close friends when you all share up your ups and downs of the week over scrambled eggs and hash browns. Or C, take your coffee and poached eggs in bed on the weekends, lapping up the week's news or your latest ebook purchase. I'm sorry, who's got time for any of this? People without children that are single. <laughs> I, I can't relate to any of those. Oh, come on. You like to, you like, you can change this to lunch. I could do lunch. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. guess lunch maybe has a little different perspective. So, yeah. okay. I'll answer that as a lunch one. Okay. When it comes to reading, you A, love books that inspire, self-help, home decor, 85 way ways to cook <laughs> beans in a crock pot. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> B, prefer to journey through the chapters with a group of fellow book enthusiasts. Or C, <laughs> pursue the shelves of a bookstore, filling the cover material, looking at the design, reading the summaries, and buying the books that whispers, read me. Oh, yeah. All right. I got that one. Okay. One more. Okay. Oh, goody. Time to entertain. You, A, party sparingly, but when it happens, girl, it happens. <laughs> you plan the entire shindig on a theme and within a budget because that's more challenging. To maintain creative control, you answer offers of what can I bring to just yourself. Okay. <laughs> B, that's How a good many one. of us say that? I know. Your presence is presence enough. I know. <laughs> um, lo B, love parties, planning them, attending them, talking about them afterwards. Being in a crowd is the thing that gets you energized, and you're um, as happy to be a part of something and the works that you are to plan yourself. So you just like being around people. Okay. Or C, have the local market on speed dial and their catering menu memorized. You love being pampered by well-cooked and delivered meal, and you assume your guests will too. 
the night begins and ends with a pretty glass of Prosecco, of course. <laughs> All right. Okay, that one, I, that's kind of a stretch for me, too. Um, I'm just a simple gal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you want to... Okay, how many add up? What do you have the most of? A, a B, or C? Oh, um, I have four. Uh, mostly A's. That was me, too. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So if you answered mostly A, your self-care identity is creative. What? You, yeah. I know. I was surprised, too. I am not creative. Maybe not. Maybe I wasn't surprised. Um, to you, self-care is about exploration and fun. You don't mind getting messy and you're up for a challenge. Trying something new isn't stressful. It means, or excuse me, it brings meaning to an otherwise drab world. I do have a drab life. Now, you had some Bs there too, right? I did. Actually, I had, so I had, for the record, I had four A's and three Bs. And, and three you know C's. what? Two of those Bs, I was kind of like really in between. The lunch one, that was a B. Okay. So if you're a B... Your self-care identity is social. You love to be surrounded by good people and long-lasting friends. You receive energy by being around others, the more the merrier. And you get the most out of self-care that brings others joy, too. Um, if you answered mostly C, your self-care identity is indulgent. Whether alone or with others, doing something new or something you love, you want to be there. And you want it to be luxurious and pampering. You place the emphasis on care and self-care, and you are happy to spoil yourself as often as you get the chance. Now, <laughs> the funny thing about this is that I identify with all three of those things. I think I have a piece of every one of those. Yeah. It is, I really like to do something nice for myself sometimes, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, and so, like, it depends on my mood, too. Sometimes I love yeah. to be creative. Um, you know, if you don't have a creative outlet, really, like if your job isn't creative, then sometimes your self-care, you can, you know, imagine yourself doing something creative that would help your, um, just help you identify with yourself, right? Whether that's painting or like this says, mm -hmm. um, you're up for a challenge and you don't mind getting messy. Trying something new is good for you. Um, yeah. So to me, I take that as in, let's say your self-care today is exercise mm -hmm. you decide to go outside because it's a nice day yeah maybe go to the park and do a hike in the wherever um yeah you know that's that could be the adventuresome part of that or the challenge maybe it's maybe it's 20 degrees out and you still want to go out yeah and, and like sometimes do self-care doesn't necessarily <clears throat> have to mean being by yourself for me that's that's how I identify it being by myself but sometimes yeah. like people self-care with their children like that's just how they identify self-care as being with their kids like you know, if you're creative, you could like get your feet in the creek too. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, we do we we do that sometimes. I think I I think that's funny. We're both kind of A's uh -huh. because I identify with the self care as being by myself. Yeah, you said something funny to me the other day. Well, not really funny, but um, you didn't mind taking a drive because you were by yourself. Yes. I'm the same way. I like to be by myself in the car. Yes. I can listen to what I wanted to. Yes. I it's time for myself. I can you know kind of drift off while I'm driving and you know you kind of let your thoughts take over and for me it's a really good time to um, process something that's going on for the day or plan something you know what I mean I do but but here's the thing that's this is so great because I'm totally different in that regard because when I am by myself in the car I feel like I am my true self I don't have to be for anybody else I'm in this car by myself I don't want to think about everything that's going on around me I turn up my jams. Today, I listened to some Rihanna. And Amy, I just want you to know that, girl, anytime you need to, you can get under my umbrella. Oh, I like it. So I was work, 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 work. <laughs> are you working, work, work? Yeah. So if I pull up next to you at a stoplight, are you going to be like the person that's going like this? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Head banging and singing surprised. out loud. Yeah, that's just my time. Or sometimes I'll listen to uh, podcasts. When I'm by yeah. myself, too. Because yeah. it's hard to, you have to get in. Like, I try to read a little bit every day, um, whether that's like 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, podcasts are a way, or Audible is a way to, to not have to read when you're in the car. Yeah. Um, well, it, you know, some people, if you get into a book, you know, like, I was the one. I picked, like, perusing the titles and all of that. Because sometimes I get into a book and I don't really like it. If it does not capture me immediately, I cannot focus on it. That's why I don't read fiction. Yeah, on the self on the self help. Uh, yeah, book. no, I actually tend to read things that are more um, personal, like um, how to you know. I, like I read a lot of business stuff, <laughs> just on motivation and marketing and creativity and things like that.
things to keep you motivated and keep you going See, and creative. Uh, well, because See? I lack the creativity. That's I'm not marketing oh i know she's, she's so she's good, good at, at marketing I, we we have to give her this quiz and see how she does yes on it. <laughs> that would be funny because she's she has something to say i was i think some of us don't realize what is a different focus for self-care but um psychological you touched on that trying something new mm -hmm. and letting out some creativity that's that's physiological as far as, or I'm sorry, psychological. Um, well, it can be physiological too. I guess it could. Yeah. I guess it could be. <laughs> um, but people don't think about that when they think about self-care. They just think about maybe I'll get my na nails done or yeah. things like that. But well, spirituality, that's another one. Oh, that's a big one. And I think a lot of people don't think about that either on, um, you know, whatever the focus is for you, something that grounds you, something that kind of reins you back in, um, gives you time to think and just re-energizes yourself, mm -hmm. whether that is faith-based or energy-based or whatever you do. For me, obviously, that's faith-based. But um, did you know that you need to take care of yourself financially? Financial is another aspect of self-care. Oh, absolutely. And we touched on that a little bit earlier, too, about talking about your credit. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and it was funny, too, when you're talking about the physiological self-care, too. I mean, that's, you know, we th I think of physical means. And that's what a lot of people think of when they think of self-care, too. Um, and it's interesting, too, because I asked my son. I was like, so, you know, what kinds of things do you think that mommy does to take care of herself? And he's so... <laughs> He's this the sweetest. Kid, he was like, hmm, well, you eat healthy, okay. Um, and he said, you drink a lot of water. I said, okay, that's a good one too. And he said, you learn a lot. And I was, I was like, you know what? That's a really good one. <laughs> Because, you that know, is never really stop. Creative. I always, I always project, like never stop learning, never stop learning. And if you can align yourself with really good uh, hearted people that are really smart, like always take the time to do that. I think you just touched on a huge key that a lot of us do not ever think about. Think about who you are surrounding yourself with. Right. Are these positive people? Right. Are these people who are, um, you know, they take care of their health physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, you know, are they taking care of themselves that way? When you surround yourself by people like that, yeah, you are going to absorb that too. Well, and that's an, and especially if you're trying to seek advice about something. Yeah. Do, Learning. Yeah. Don't take it from somebody that's not somebody that you that's a role model to you or a mentor or even somebody that you look up to, like, would you make those decisions for yourself that they are making for their life? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do they talk about people in front of you? Or I mean, these are all really important things. And I think it's really easy for a lot of people to just kind of get wrapped up in, you know, we've been friends forever or, um, oh, they're fine. That won't rub off on me. But it, it really does. I mean, you have to make a conscious effort about who you are allowing to speak into your life. And if you're, if you're, if people that are positive influence, if you're not letting them speak into your life, that's a disservice to you as well. Absolutely. So, and a lot of people have a hard time with that, right? Yeah. Um, but speaking of what we were just talking about and kind of negative and toxic relationships. So this is a huge part of self-care, right? Um, if there is a relationship in your life that is not serving you, right? Um, you may not even realize it at the time either. Yeah. And you're allowed to let that go because there are people that come into your life for a season and a reason, right? Yep. But here's a really good quote. Um, and this book is was really instrumental in me and my self-care, especially when I'm going through a lot of murky times. Um, it's called The Art of Forgiveness, Love, Kindness, and Peace. It's by Jack Kornfield, K-O-R-N-F-I-E-L-D. Um, it looks like this. It's pretty in purple, mm -hmm. um, but it's a really easy read. It's like a bunch of little, it's got meditations in it. Oh yeah. That guided is meditation. Yeah. That is an easy um, read. Yeah. And it's just like one, one sentence on, you know, but anyway, this is my very favorite. It's on page 25. It's my very favorite sentence or motto, if you will, or mantra. The past is over. Forgiveness means giving up all hope of a better past. Amen, girl. Right? I mean, it's yeah. all about that forgiveness thing, right? It is. Forgiveness does not forget, nor does it condone the past. Forgiveness sees wisely. It willingly acknowledges that it's unjust, harmful, and wrong. It bravely recognizing, recognizes the sufferings of the past and understanding 
the conditions that brought them about. There is a strength in forgiveness. When we forgive, we can also say, never again will I allow these things to happen. We may resolve to never again permit such harm to come to um, ourselves or another. So it's a really good, um, this is a great, it's a great little book. And you can keep it with you everywhere you go. If you're having a rough day, you literally just, oh, yeah, okay. Just earmark your pages yeah. and go back to those. It really gives you some perspective um, and how, because it's really, really hard for people to recognize toxic relationships. And that I think that that's one of probably the main things in, in, in self-care is taking care of yourselves by um, letting go of things that are harmful to you. So it, this is really encouraging, this book. It's um, okay to not be friends with everybody. Right. It's okay to have a different perspective on things and have different opinions than anyone else. It's, it's okay. okay to say no. Yeah, yeah, it's just say okay no. It's okay to say no. <laughs> um, and another uh, recommendation, a book that I have, um, Beth. do this study with other people you can do this by yourself if you need to and get the workbook um, she's got a ton of different ones but um, you know one of the, it's is like a journal right and you kind of so one of the the greatest things was um, what positive changes might result if you allow God complete access to your heart yep and I said and I wrote this and this was like several years ago enjoying the journey not the destination that was my answer to that and you I really thought about that hard, didn't you? Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that you wrote that down not realizing how many years later it would have such a different meaning for you right. than when you wrote it down. Yeah. It's easier to enjoy the journey when you're in the good times yeah. and not oh, the bad yeah, times. Yeah, sure, sure. Because um, you survive the bad times, right? Yeah. But this kind of stuff is what that, that's for. I yeah. Mean, you, enjoying the journey means that I allow God in full access to my heart. Yes, yes. And you and I have very similar views on that. Yeah. And um, you can follow Beth Moore on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. You can follow her. She has a lot of um, videos and um, does, does a lot of really great things. She's, she's a great uh, person to yeah. seek a advice from. You know, the Bible tells us to seek wise counsel. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to ask for help. Yes. That's something that I, I really want to stress. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if it's just a good, uh, whether it's a professional mentor that has been in your shoes or if it's a spiritual mentor in some way that you know is capable, uh, seek wise counsel. It's okay to ask for help and to need to talk to somebody once in a while. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with like having different mentors in all aspects of your life. So physical, you know, if you have somebody that's really yeah. a health coach or something, right? Or a spiritual, if you need Beth Moore to be a spiritual mentor to you, <laughs> or a financial or, planner. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but you have to have a team, right? So, and we like to say that we're part of your team too when it comes to um, financial self care, right? I wouldn't consider us mentors, but we are a support for you. That's what we get. That's what we really um, yeah, are striving to be. Yeah, the team. just uh, another outlet for yeah, you. Yeah, we're on your team. You know, going back to the circling back to um, talking about at the very beginning of our podcast, we talked about taking care of yourself. So, um, you know, your body is is your temple. Mm -hmm. That you know, God lives in your heart and your in your in your soul. The Holy Spirit lives in your soul and so forth. Um, so, just to finish a final thought for me is a verse that I think about often. Okay. Um, and it relates to the whole, if you don't take care of your body, how can you take care of anything else around you? Um, and that can look different ways for different people. But um, James 3, verse 5. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Expand so on that. My, the way I interpret that is... If you just take care of one part of yourself, it can expand to so many different areas of your life. Going back to my point about sleep, if that's what you need, you get a good night's sleep, then you're not running out of gas. You're not late for things. You know, your passport's not expiring. And, and uh, that's, if you just take care of one thing and you start small. Mm -hmm. And you do what you can do, and then you make it bigger. And then once you come to the realization that your whole body needs attention in so many different ways, mental, physical, um, and, and the things around you, then imagine what you can do if you take care of everything. And that's a great point, too, because starting small, right? Ladies, don't, don't, or gents, do not try to have this grand goal <laughs> that you are going to lose 50 pounds in the next six months 
because it's not going to happen, right? Start small. Start small. Allow yourself to eat a cupcake, you know what I mean? Or yeah. just little goals like I'm going to read 10 minutes a day for the next seven days. Okay, goal, check, great. What's the next thing I yeah. can do? If you, if you want to start losing weight, walk around the block. Yeah, just start small, and then it will grow, I promise you. Just You'll start to enjoy like it more. <laughs> yeah. Yes, just like weeds. Yes, and you know, the tongue is very sharp. So um, That's right. imagine what little it can do. The rest of your body, when you take care of it, can just be... Uh, make a world of difference in your entire life in every aspect if you just learn to take care of yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. We could talk about this for a lot of, there's so many different areas of self-care, so we can always circle back around. Um, well, hit us up and tell us what you like, yeah. what you want to hear we about. Love if you want hearing us to, from you. Yeah. If you want us to dive deeper into something, we can do that. Yeah. Um, we like talking about this kind of stuff anyway. Yeah. I'm an so. open book, so just <laughs> ask away. Um, and then next week, we, when Shannon will be back with us too. Um, no, next week is 4th of July. Yes, we will not. We will not be on next week. We will week. not be here. Enjoy your time with your families. Um, Celebrate it for the reason that it is. Absolutely. Thank a veteran. Um, absolutely. And, you know, all of the Eat first responders too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the week <laughs> after. the day off. We, we are um, kind of exploring the topic of female entrepreneurs, or female leaders, um, and how that whole work-life balance thing works out. So Yeah, and there's so many different degrees to all of that. So yeah. we'll talk about a lot yeah. of different areas. Absolutely. So how can they get in touch with us? So if you want to email us to um, ask us to dive deeper into different topics or um, you have suggestions for us or questions for us, you can email us at bluelinegroupofohio at gmail.com. Or you can hit us up on Facebook at Blue Line Real Estate Services Central Ohio. Yep. And once again, we are coming to you live from LEPD Firearms and Range right here on Bethel Road. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. We really appreciate you and your support, and we can't wait to come back in two weeks. We'll see you then. Have a great week and 4th of July. Stay safe.